Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017 in downtown San Francisco at the Mission Bay Convention Center. About 800 hardcore developers talking about Node and, and uh, really the crazy growth and acceleration of this community as well as the applications. We're excited to have our next guest. He's Nick O'Leary, developer advocate from IBM uh, for Watson IoT, and you're working on something kind of cool called Node Red. First off, welcome. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, so what is Node Red? So Node-RED is an open source project we started working on about four years ago now in the Emerging Technologies Group in, in the UK, okay. part of IBM. And it's a Node.js application that gives you a visual programming tool for Internet of Things type applications. So when you run it, uh, you point your web browser at it, and it gives you this uh, you know, visual workspace to start dragging in nodes into your canvas okay. that represent some sort of functionality like um, connect to Twitter and get some tweets or save something to a database or read some sensor data, whatever it might be. And you start drawing wires between those nodes to ex express how you want your application to flow, how you want data to flow through your application. So it's um, you know, quite a lightweight tool and really accessible to a wide range of developers, whether okay. they're sort of seasoned, experienced node developers or you know kids just learning how to program because it hides complexity. Right. And yeah, it's Node.js based, so it runs down on a Raspberry Pi, it runs up in the cloud like IBM Bluemix, wherever you want to run it. It's a really flexible developer platform. Pretty interesting because we just had Monica on from Intel and she mm -hmm. was talking about one of the interesting things in this development world of Node.js is so much of the code was written by somebody else. I think yeah. she said in a lot of projects, the actual original code maybe 2% mm. because you're using all these other stuff and libraries that have already been created. And it sounds like yeah. you're really kind of leveraging that infrastructure oh, to be able to do something like this. Absolutely. So, one of the key things we enabled very early on was to, because we recognize the power of our tool is those nodes in our palette that right. you drag on. So we built the system so that people could write their own nodes and extend the palette. And we used the same node packaging as you know, the standard NPM ecosystem. And as of a couple of weeks ago, we have over a thousand third party nodes people have written. So there's probably already a module for most hardware, devices, online APIs, databases, whatever you want. Right. You know, people are creating and extending the platform in all sorts of ways. Just building on top of that you know, incredible ecosystem that Node.js right. has. And then how does that tie back to Watson? You said you're involved in, in, in yep. Watson. So Watson people don't think of necessarily a simple, simple interface, but sure. not necessarily a simple application. Yeah. So what's the tie between Watson and Node.js and Node-RED? So, um, Node-RED is a, a development tool, I say, it all hinges on those nodes and what they connect to. So we have got nodes for the Watson IoT platform, so that's great for getting, if you're running Node-RED on a Raspberry Pi, connect it up to our IoT platform, connect to applications in, in the Bluemix space. Um, but we also have nodes for the Watson cognitive services, like machine you know, the machine learning things, right. uh, visual recognition, text-to-speech, all, all of those services we have nodes for. So again, it allows people to start playing with the rich capabilities of the Watson platform without having to dive straight into understanding lines of code. Right, and right. You start being productive and create real meaningful solutions um, without having to understand whether it's Node.js or Java or whatever language you'd normally write to right. access low-level APIs. And, and, and can the visual tool connect to things that are not necessarily Node-specific? So, anything that provides some sort of API. Okay. You know, if it's got a, a programmatic API, then it's easier to do with Node, because we are in a Node ecosystem. Right. But we've got established patterns for talking to other languages. But also, things often provide like a REST API, HTTP, MQTT, many other protocols. And we have all of that support built bit straight into the platform. Right. And so, what was the motivation to build this? Just to have an easier development interface? Um, yeah, it, it was twofold really. One was in, a, in the emerging technologies group where I was, we do proof of concepts for clients. We have to turn around really quickly. So whilst we're more than capable of writing individual lines of code, having that tool that lets us experiment much quicker and you know, solve client, real client problems much quicker was right. a great value to right. us. But then we also saw the advantage for the developers who don't understand individual lines of code, 
for educational purposes, whatever it might be. Right. Um, you know, there was sort of great motivators there in the various communities we're involved with in sort of IoT, home hobbyists, all that sort of space as well. It's, it's found a real, you know, incredible user community across the board. And when it started, was it designed to be an open source project or that, that uh, kind of realization, yeah. if you will, kind of came along the way? I think on day one, it wasn't the first thing in the mind. Yeah, we were just experimenting with technology. Right, right. Which is kind of how we operated. Right. But it, we very quickly got to the point where we realized yeah, we didn't have the time and resource to write all the nodes that could be written. Right. And there, there was a much broader audience than just us doing our day job that, that this tool could tap into. So right. maybe not on day one, but you know, maybe on you know, a month in, we thought this has to be open source. So you know, it was about six months after we started it, we moved to um, an open source project. And that was September 2013. Okay. And then in October last year, IBM contributed the project to be a founding project of the JavaScript Foundation. Okay. So it's, whilst it's a project that has come from IBM, it's now a project that you know, is independently governed. It's not owned by IBM. You know, it's, it's part of the foundation. So you know, look at the wide range of other companies getting involved, making use of it, contributing back. And really good to see that ecosystem build. Oh, that's great. So I'm just curious, you said you do a lot of uh, customer prototyping. Mm. Obviously, you're involved in Watson, which is mm -hmm. you know, kind of the pointy end of the, of the spear right now with IBM, with the cognitive and, yeah. and the IoT. As you kind of look at the landscape and stuff you're working on over the next, I would never say multiple years, because mm -hmm. that's way too long. Six months, nine months, what are some of your priorities? What are some of the things you're seeing mm -hmm. kind of that customers are doing today that they couldn't do before that you know, gets yeah. you excited to get up out of bed and go to work every day? From my perspective, you know, with our focus on Node-RED, which is kind of where my focus is right now, um, it's really that developer experience. You know, we, we've, done, we've gone so far with our really sort of intuitive to use tooling, but we recognize there's more to do. So how can we make it, how can we enable better collaboration, better you know, basic, basic workflows within our particular tooling? Because you know, there are, there are people using Node-RED in particular happily in production today. But it's funny because we don't have a 1.0 version number. Because, you know, for us, that wasn't interesting to us because we are delivering, you know, meaningful function. Right, right. But in the project, we have just published our roadmap to a 1.0 to really give that firm statement to people who are unsure about it as a technology that this is good for production. Right. And, and we've got a wealth of use cases of companies who are using it today. So, and that's very much our focus, my focus within Node-RED. And all of it does then tie back to, yes, it's a JS Foundation project, but then with my developer advocate hat on, um, making sure that draw from Node-RED into the Watson platform is as seamless and intuitive as possible, because that, that helps everyone. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so before I let you go, mm -hmm. um, two things. One, begs the question, what version are you on? Yep. And where can people yep. go to find more information so sure. they can see when that 1.0 and, yep. and obviously contribute? So, as a Node project, we've, we've stuck to semantic versioning. So we're currently version 0.17. Okay. So we've done you know, 17 major releases over the last well, three and a bit years. Um, and you know, that's where we're moving forward. We've got this roadmap to get to 1.0 first quarter next year. All right. And if you want to find out more, nodered.org is where we're based. you can find us through links through via the JS Foundation as well. All right, well Nick, thanks for taking a little bit of your time and yeah. uh, safe travels home at the end of the show. Thank you very much. All right, he's Nick O'Leary from IBM. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching, see you next time.